Hi everyone, long time no see. I'm Faison Kiwi, and here today, I figured, why not go over my games of 2023? It was one hell of a stacked year, I think everyone could agree there were a lot of big hits. So, let's kick off my honourable mentions. Starting with Metroid Prime Remastered. Now, this might surprise a lot of people that it's not in my top 5, but at the end of the day, it's a remaster of a game. Uh, a game that I adore, a game that gave me the name I use online, Phazon. But boy, did it showcase just how powerful the Switch is and how it can make things look. They kept that tight gameplay, but gave it modern improvements. The action was great, running around in morph ball mode and such was just as thrilling as ever. And I have to say, they just, it's, it's the main thing. They got it looking absolutely gorgeous. And for that, I'm super grateful. They honored the uh, GameCube release with making it perform well, look good. And yeah, if you haven't got around to playing it and you have a Switch, and you like Metroid-style games, or Metroidvanias, or action-adventure games, or action-adventure shooters, you owe it to yourself to give this one a shot. Don't let it pass you by. Next up is Bolt Gun, a Warhammer 40,000 inspired boomer shooter. Now this one came out of left field, and stayed on my radar for a little bit, and then I got to play it. And boy howdy, that is one hell of a boomer shooter. Everything feels weighty, the Bolt Gun explosions that fire off the enemies calling out you know all kinds of cr battle cries and things but the best part for me was having a literal like you heretic kind of button you got to just mash it and there were a ton of things that the main character would say and it was just an amazing game for the price point as well it was not a big triple a price game but it was fun short but the kind of game i'd replay now and then absolutely top tier and lastly in my honourable mentions, and it's partly here because I didn't play it enough, is Dredge. Made by a New Zealand developer, Dredge has you going around and um, fishing and such. And then there's Eldritch Horrors and all kinds of quests and a story unfolding. What's going on? Better not stay out after dark, it gets dangerous. The Tetris style management for your inventory and what you catch, also as a big fan of that kind of style of gameplay for things and puzzles and whatnot. Uh, that kept me occupied. I really liked it, and I'm looking forward to the DLC that they're bringing out and such as well, because that game just keeps getting better and better. We'll kick off our list, starting with number 5, Hi-Fi Rush. This Shadow Dropped game proved to be a Game Pass delight. Its colourful characters, really really good but simple story, and gameplay were top tier. And then, the soundtrack. Now, I played this on stream, so I couldn't use the licensed soundtrack, and it was really, really good. But, I did a playthrough off stream as well, and I gotta say, the, the, the music they picked was perfect. Um, the perfect drug, if I recall correctly, for the final boss battle was just mwah, chef's kiss. But yeah, absolutely excellent action and rhythm game, a combination that I had never tried personally. I'm sure other games have probably tried something similar, but... Hi-Fi Rush just nailed it, both in aesthetic, performance, and I never came across any bugs while playing. The levels were great and varied, never got too boring, and it didn't outstay its welcome. Hi-Fi Rush certainly was a rush to play, that's for sure. On to number 4, with Resident Evil 4 Remake. Now, the Resident Evil series has had its share of remakes recently, and number 4 definitely the best one they've done. Resident Evil 2 was really good, 3 was a bit short, but Resident Evil 4 introduced new mechanics, made the locations and everything just look so gorgeous, and managed to tell the story in a coherent fashion, and while leaving a few bits out and changing some things, kept the core of it true. And I think that's the most important thing it does. Well that and its mechanical additions. It stands apart from the game it's a remake of, and they both stand equally great in my eyes, for different reasons. The Resident Evil 4 remake was an enjoyable romp from start to finish with plenty added and much, much, much replayability. If you haven't had the chance to check it out yet, it's worth it. Less on the horror scale, more on the um, action scale, but holy crap did they make the uh, regenerators probably scarier than they were in the original game, and those things made me absolutely terrified when I first played the original game. So um, if you're looking for a little bit of horror element in there, it's still there. But yeah, Resident Evil 4 Remake, 
remade greatness is still greatness. Kicking off number three with a return to one of my favorite franchises of the PlayStation 2 era, Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. Now this game had everything I hoped a new Armored Core would have. The controls, while simplified in some regards, were streamlined in such a way that I think it actually plays probably the best of any Armored Core game. The customization is fantastic, being able to make your own emblems. I made Megatron from Transformers, and took ages to make a Decepticon logo, as well as a few other things too. But the amount of stuff the community has come up with for the game, like any Souls game, is staggering. The game plays well, I came across no bugs, glitches, or major faults. It's a challenge, and I keep getting my ass kicked, but keep heading back for more. If you like giant robots, and you want a sprinkling of story, but it not in your face, and you want to move from mission to mission, Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon is the game for you. It's hard, but fair, and there is a story in there, you just gotta dig it out. But my god, it really lit the fires of Rubicon in my heart for giant robot games, and I can't wait to hopefully see a resurgence, much like the Souls-like genre spread like wildfire after Dark Souls' success. Number 2. Baldur's Gate 3. I just have to come out and say it, it's one of the greatest role-playing games that has come out in the last decade. Some would argue it's one of the greatest role-playing games of all time. I certainly really, really love it, I'm not sure where it sits in those gauges still, but it's one of the best games I've definitely played last year. And I have to say, the characters, the story, the combat, taking 5e, which admittedly has its frustrations with me as a D&D gamer. I have all my books behind me there. <laughs> they translated it to a computer game and gave you the most freedom I have seen in a role-playing game in a very long time. To say too much would spoil story elements, but the freedom to create your own character and just how well they did, the soundtrack, the sound effects, the visuals, the just sheer quality of facial animations and voice acting and such, if you love role-playing games and are still on the fence about Baldur's Gate 3, hop off the fence and give it a try. It is honestly worth all the hype, and while some of the writing may falter here and there, it's just got a very solid foundation, you're bound to find things you like in there. Baldur's Gate 3, one of the best role-playing games I've played in a long time, and certainly the best role-playing game of last year. And number one goes to a game in a genre I have adored since I can remember. I've always liked playing fighting games, and last year brought out one that was no exception to that. Street Fighter 6 is my game of the year because it has such a great single player offering, it's been a great introduction to people new to the genre and returning to Street Fighter after a long time. It has a great roster while not large, they all feel varied and different and fun to play. And it has just such a great single player offering, there's arcade modes, there's a full on role playing game where you get to make your own character and meet all the iconic Street Fighter fighters. It's just got so much on offer, and I've had so much fun. The online is fantastic, they've got a good lobby system and pretty good matchmaking. Their ranking system is pretty good too. While there's some region locking here and there with how it matches you with people, they're supposedly opening that up, but even despite that, if I match up with someone and they're in the States, the rollback netcode is good enough that I'd barely notice a difference, and it's been fantastic. Fighting games should be accessible, and this game is no exception, with the inclusion of its modern controls as well. Anyone can jump in, and if you want to play simple, but you want to just hit one button to throw a fireball, you can do that. They have made it easy enough for anyone to get into, and that's a great thing for fighting games. And that's my game of the year, 2023. What were your favorite games of the last year? And apologies about such a late video, and how I haven't done any since my last Game of the Year video. I'm going to be trying to get better about that as time goes on this year. I've set myself a little goal, and um, we'll see if I can keep to it. Life's been hectic, but it's good. We're in a new place, as you can see, and I'm still streaming, so you can catch me there as well. But take care, have a good one, and I'll see you around.